Okay, so it turns out that there's two types of ways that in which uh, two or more atoms can come together to form uh, compounds. Uh, the two types of bonds are one, covalent bonds, and the second one is the ionic bond. The name uh, of these two types of bonds tries to tell you what's going on between the atoms. Uh, covalents are sharing covalence electrons. So a covalent bond is between two atoms who are sharing valence electrons. These can come in a couple of varieties. Uh, one, there is the single bond, single covalent bond, where the atoms are sharing two valence electrons. A double bond is, you can think of it as two single bonds, where they are sharing two pairs of electrons for uh, a total of four. Two pairs of electrons, so four total. And the last one would be a triple bond, a triple covalent bond, where the atoms are sharing three pairs of electrons for a total of six. Three pairs. Now in contrast, the ionic bond uh, is uh, the attraction between two ions. Okay, so ions are atoms or molecules that have a net positive or negative uh, charge. So in an ionic bond we have a positively charged ion that is electrostatically attracted to a negatively charged ion. And that electrostatic attraction between the uh, positively charged ion and the negatively charged ion is the ionic bond. This can result from the transfer of electrons, uh, which we'll talk about in a little bit, uh, where one atom loses an electron or transfers an electron uh, to another atom, and that result is a positive charge um, ion for the atom or molecule that just lost an electron, and a negative charge for the atom that just gained an electron. Okay, <clears throat> so what are the two different uh, scenarios in which an ionic bond or a covalent bond would set up? Well, it turns out that most of the time, not all the time, but well, most of the time, covalent bonds form between non-metal atoms. And ionic bonds form between a metal and a non-metal. Okay, um, this has to do with uh, primarily uh, differences in electronegativity, and uh, which we'll talk about in a little bit. And then, of course, um, how uh, either uh, of these atoms are going to uh, 
satisfy what is known as the octet rule. Before we get to the octet rule, let's just talk about how we display uh, compounds uh, in what are known as molecular formulas. Now you've already seen these most likely at some point in time, uh, either in a different science course or reading through the, the textbook. But what we do is we uh, show uh, molecular formulas in this fashion. Say we have water. Water is of course H2O. And it's H2O because there are two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. Now whenever uh, there's just one oxygen, one atom of any type, we don't need to show the subscript. So if you don't see a subscript there, we know there's just one of them. But anytime you have more than one atom, you're going to show that in a formula by uh, showing uh, a subscript right to the right of that elementals, uh, the atom's elemental symbol. And that shows you how many uh, different atoms are there. Okay. If we wanted to uh, show the molecular formula for the uh, sugar molecule glucose, it turns out each glucose atom has six carbons. And so we would write C and then a subscript six as 12 hydrogen atoms and then uh, six additional oxygen atoms. So the molecular formula for glucose is C6H12O6. And so that's how we would uh, write it in terms of a formula. Now eventually when we start talking about polyatomic ions, uh, you'll notice that uh, we will need to use uh, parentheses. So a very common um, base or one, ba one type of base would be uh, calcium hydroxide. The calcium hydroxide is the calcium ion and two hydroxide ions, which are polyatomic ions. Now, if we were to just write CaOH2, you might look at this formula and think that there's one calcium atom, one oxygen atom, and then two hydrogens. But it turns out there's two hydroxide, which is OH, and so we need to show a, uh, a parentheses around that hydroxide. So now that we know that there are two hydroxides and one calcium, so in the terms of this, we just basically factor in this uh, subscript on the outside of the parentheses. So each calcium hydroxide compound has two, or excuse me, one calcium, two hydrogens, and two oxygen atoms.